Hi, it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another video edition of Widower Wednesday. I'm Abel Keo, author of the book Dating a Widower, and today I'm going to talk about the secret of mine and Julie's relationship or marriage success. Uh, yesterday, Julie and I, we celebrated our 19th wedding anniversary. And for those who don't know, uh, a little bit of backstory on this. We tied the knot 15 months after my late wife died. A lot of people thought it was too soon. Um, and when you look at the data, especially when it comes to second marriages, uh, the divorce rate is pretty high. About two thirds of second marriages will end in divorce. Add in the fact, like any, uh, that one person is a widow or widower, the divorce rate creeps up even higher. Add in the fact that, you, you know, I got married soon after my late wife's death the divorce rate creeps up even higher, yet Julie and I have been able to make our marriage last for 19 years, and it'll probably last at least another 30 or 40 uh, until one of us kicks the bucket. At least that's my hope anyway. <laughs> so um, people ask, well, you know, what is it? What have you guys done that have made your, you know, that's made your marriage last so long? And, um, you know, I guess to be fully transparent, you know, we've had the same ups and downs that just come across, that any, any, that any uh, couple experiences, you know, we've, you know, financial issues, unemployment, uh, you know, sometimes wondering what are we going to do with our life? You know, we've had seven kids, lots of stresses, lots of ups and downs, way more ups than downs. But, you know, like anything, it has ups and downs. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is, is that the downs, the uh, they haven't been widower related. Uh, widower related issues haven't played a major role in our marriage. Uh, and when they did play roles, probably most of them were probably in the first year. And they, even those were just kind of little bumps. They weren't like major issues that we had to overcome. So what is the secret? You know, what, what is it that we've done that have been able to uh, make the marriage last 19 years, but minimize the widower related issues and, you know, not have that interfere with our marriage. So um, I'm going to tell you the secret of our success. There's three things. And I'm making this video with the hope that any widows or widowers who are watching or those who are going or hoping to marry a widow or widower um, and want to marry uh, again. Um, I, ho I hope these three things can maybe put some some of the concerns and thoughts that you're going through in perspective and give you an idea of why we've been able to make it last. Um, I also want to note that I have done longer videos on these three topics. So as I talk about these three topics, it's going to be fairly brief. Uh, but if you want more detail on one or more of these topics, look in the video description, and I've actually put three video links in there that line up with these three things, and you can get more details on that. Okay, so here we go. What are the three things? Uh, number one is, well, we make each other number one. Um, it's easy for widowed people to miss their late husband or wife um, and miss them so much uh, that they don't make their new spouse the top priority. And for us, or for Julie and I, we have made each other our top priority. Um, you know, even though I was married before and love my late wife and still love her, uh, Julie is my top priority and she shouldn't feel like she's competing with a ghost or anybody else for that matter. Um, and so, you know, 99.7% of my thoughts, my heart, my actions are focused on Julie, our, on our, our relationship, the present, uh, the future together, our family. That's where the focus should be. And that's where we've both kept the focus. We haven't let other people, deceased or living or whatever else, distract us from what's really important. And what is really important is making each other number one. Uh, the second one is that we were both willing to pay the price of a new life. Um, often, I think when people get married, especially in second marriages, uh, they want someone who fits into their current life, or maybe they even try to cram them into the old life that they enjoyed with their late spouse. However, when you marry someone, you agree to start a new life together. And so this requires both parties to make sacrifices, right, and start that, start that new life. So in my case, um, that meant selling my home, moving to a new city, uh, redefining relationships with friends, family, uh, the late wife's family, things like that. And those, some of those decisions were hard. They weren't necessarily easy decisions to make, but I made them. And I have no regrets about making any of them. Uh, looking back, our marriage is stronger. And I think you know we really built a really strong foundation uh, because of those sacrifices and choices I was willing to make. And Julie made sacrifices and choices too. Um, it wasn't just me, but I'm pointing out that, you know, you, you, when, when you start a new life with someone, you've really got, there's a price that needs to be paid. Everything in this life has a price and you've got to be willing to pay the price of a new life and make sacrifices to order to start a new life with someone else. Okay, the third thing is, is before saying or doing or posting something uh, related to uh, my late wife, um, I asked myself this question, will saying, doing, or posting this strengthen or hurt my marriage to Julie? And if there's even a small worry that saying or doing or posting something will cause contention or hurt 
to Julie or our marriage, I don't do it. And oftentimes I see this a lot where people are in a relationship with a widower and he is saying, or she, it's not just widowers, it's widows too, but uh, they are saying, doing, or posting things that hurt their relationship. And so I've always had that question in the back of my mind is that if I'm doing something, um, you know, if I, whatever, something, you know, a memory or something pops up about Krista, do I say it, do I post it or whatever? Um, I ask myself that question, how will, will doing this strengthen or hurt my relationship? And if the, if I, again, if, even if, even if I have this niggling, just a tiny concern that something is wrong, um, I don't do it and I don't say it and I keep my mouth shut and life goes on. <laughs> so those are the three things. It's not really complicated people. Um, you make each other number one, we, you pay the price for the new life and you ask yourself is doing whatever is doing, saying, or posting something going to strength or hurt in my relationship. If you can, uh, if you can answer that question, honestly, you do those three things, you will have a great life together. And I guess as a bonus, I would say that we have, uh, clung to the vows and covenants that we made when we got married, we take those very seriously. And, you know, when we, we look at our relationship as an eternal relationship, one that's going to last forever. So we don't want to do things that will uh, jeopardize that. Cause I look forward to being with Julie in the next life. So there you go. Those are the uh, three things. Uh, that are there. Again, I encourage you if you want more information on those three things, I've put links in the uh, description below. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Tell us, tell me things that have strengthened your relationship or even hurt your relationship. What, what do you think people should avoid or do or not do uh, if they're dating or married to uh, widowers? Feel free to tell me, you know, tricks and things that uh, you have as well. For, feel free to like this video. Feel free to subscribe. You can get notifications when future videos are posted. And I'm Abel Keo. Oh, you can also schedule a coaching session if you want to get some help with your own marriage or your own relationship. Uh, talk through some of these issues and come up with a game plan to move forward. We can do that too. Um, I'm Abel Keo, author of the book Dating a Widower, and I will see you next Wednesday.